Hello and welcome to this new short Blazor WebAssembly tutorial. My name is Patrick and today I want to show you how to create an edit form and how to use validations with this form. This form will be rather simple. It's a rel really small login form with a username and a password. And in there we will use the edit form component and then two more components for the validation. And this whole tutorial is actually taken from my Blazor a WebAssembly full stack bootcamp. You can check it out here on YouTube. There's a preview for this thing or just have a look in the video description below for the link to the complete course or you just keep watching because I think this really suits this Blazor shorts category where we just want to see how you will make or how you would make an edit form with validations rather quickly. Don't get confused in the beginning. It's about a login form, a complete login feature with authentication and so on. This is done in the course. But if you just want to have a look how to do a form with Blazor WebAssembly and how to utilize validations with a model and a function that should be called on submit, then this tutorial is for you. Okay, and before we start, I would say please hit the like button and maybe subscribe to my channel. Maybe you also want to subscribe to my newsletter. And as always, thank you so much to all my supporters for buying me a coffee. This really means a lot to me. I will love you forever. And now let's start with the tutorial. We start with creating a simple login form. In this section, we will kind of simulate the authentication of a user because there will be no web service call. We will add one later when we implement the web API with Entity Framework, of course. But for now, let's build a login form and simply authenticate the user with any credentials. To add a form, we use the edit form component. An edit form needs a model to map its form components like input fields, for example, with the corresponding properties of that model. So let's create a simple user login model in the shared project first. So right click the shared project and we add a new class and we call this one user login. Let's make this public. And this thing only gets two properties. The first one is a string, which is the user name. And the second one also a string for the password. Now we can already make use of the built-in validation feature here. We just add the attribute required on top of every property and we'll see in a minute what effect this attribute has. So in brackets we say the username is required and we also say that the password is required of course. And to be able to use this we we add the reference system component model data annotations. Great. All right, now let's create a new page, the login page. So in the client project this time, right click pages, add razor component, and we call this one login. We can already add the page directive, page and the route login. And now here we can use the edit form component and to make use of this component, we have to add two arguments. The first one is the model. We will add the corresponding model in the code block in a second and also a function for the event on valid submit. There are also other events like on invalid submit for instance and on submit if you want to run a validation by yourself but let's keep things simple at the beginning so we can add a model variable and a submit function in the code block and use them in the form and let's also add a reference to the shared project to the imports razor real quick so that we don't have to use the complete namespace for the user login class. So here simply using blazer battles and then shared and then we go back and now in the code block let's add our user login variable so private user login user 
which is a new user login. And now we can use this variable here, simply add user. And for the on valid submit, submit event, we add a private void handle login method like that. And then we can add this method here. And now we can use the built-in forms component input text to create our input fields for the username and the password. There are more forms component, of course, and we will use them in the registration lecture. But for now, we use the input text. And apart from just using these components, let's also try to make this form a bit prettier. So we will also use divs with certain classes and so on. So let's start with the div and the class form group you know in this div we add a label for the username we give it the text username and then finally the input text component of a blazer the id here now is the username and we bind a value like that this is again how to do a data binding with a blazer and the value here is the username of our user model and we also give this a class which is form control like that and then we can actually copy this complete div for the password it's also a form group class or we use the form group class and now this label is for the password we also give it the password label here id is password and the value we want to bind here of course is also the password of the user now and what we can also add is the type password so we do not see the text actually and the last thing we can add is a button of type submit, give it also a class, button and button primary, and add the text login. All right, and maybe the handle login method here can be used to display the username and the password in the console. So let's say console right line, and then we add the user username and also the user password. All right, I would say we test this already. Everything is saved. Make sure to start your application with .NET Watch Run maybe, and then go back to Chrome. We do not have a nav menu entry for the login, but the route is a login, so simply add login to the address bar. And there is our form. We open the console so that we see what we have entered. We can add a name, like Patrick, for instance, and the top secret password here. Hit login, and this is our results. Perfect. We see a form. We see the output in the console on submit. But what about the validation now? And what about actually authenticating the user? Now, to use the validation, we have to add the data annotations validator component. So let's go back to Visual Studio and right on top of the edit form, we add data annotations validator. There it is already. And we save this and then go back to Chrome. And when we now try to log in with an invalid form, the invalid control gets a red border. We can also display an explanatory text. To do that, we go back to Visual Studio and then add the validation summary component. So for example, below the button, we add validation summary, close it, save this. And now when we hit login, Sweet, we get the text here that says the username field and the password field is required. Of course, we can also enter a custom error message. To do that, we go back to the user login model. So in here, additionally to the required attribute, we can say error message and then something like, please enter a username 
save this again and now we see our custom error message. All right, that's it. I hope you learned something. If so, I'd really appreciate it if you click the like button, subscribe to this channel maybe, and don't forget to hit the bell icon to get a notification for new videos. Maybe you also wanna to subscribe to my newsletter to get information about upcoming courses, upcoming features of Blazor maybe, .NET 6, whatever and maybe you want to support me by buying me a coffee and if so i would love you forever thank you very much to all my supporters who already did this and the last thing maybe if you want to dive deeper into blazer WebAssembly, then check out the bootcamp again there's the info card with the two hour preview here on youtube or you check out the link in the video description we're going to build an online browser game a classic online browser game with blazer WebAssembly. Uh, where users can build units, knights, archers, mages. So build an army of these units, fight against other users, climb the leaderboard, store everything in a secret server database, deploy and publish this whole application to a Windows server, and so on. So if you think this is for you, please check it out. All right, I think I'm done here. Thank you very much for watching, and i see you next time.